What's big? Hairy. Strong. Intelligent. And probably one of the most known monsters that originated out of North America. Yet, seems to have relatives all over the world. That clip was a random find on YouTube from NVTV of the screams of an alleged Bigfoot out of Virginia. I do apologize to the owners. The right goes to them. I don't have any affiliation with them other than a mutual professional interest. And I don't know if that clip is real, but I thought the alleged screams would be a good intro. My name is Dakota Franson, and I am the specialist of the strange. All around the world, we hear stories of monsters, humanoid creatures, unknown animals that have yet to be identified through mainstream science. Perhaps one of the most famous examples is none other than Bigfoot. There's many weird claims around this guy. What is he? Where is he from? Could he in fact be from another world? That's what I would like to discuss tonight. Welcome everybody. I hope January treated you well. For me, it's been kind of touchy-turvy there. Been a rough start to the new year. But we'll power through. Excuse me. Ooh. But we'll power through as always. Also, stay tuned to the end of this program because we have, I want to discuss intel on a new case, which hopefully by the time this episode comes out, all the information is already available on my YouTube channel. So be sure to subscribe there, check the comments for a special official listing of everywhere you can find me on social media. And more. And let's get this party started. I said bring it! Hey everyone, Dakota Franson here, Specialist of the Strange. I just wanted to come with you real quick about potentially doing your own podcast. Have you ever wanted to start your own podcast? Maybe you got a lot of questions like, how do I record? How do I get my show into all these apps that are out there? How can I make money? There are probably several thousand, thousand, thousand other questions 
about getting this show off the ground that you have been f- formulating and communicating in your mind. And I'm here to tell you that there is a very simple answer to this. Anchor. Anchor is a one-stop shop for recording, hosting, distributing your show. And best of all, it is 100% free. Get all the perks from the other guys without having to pay for subscription fees. And best of all, it is easy. And in fact, Anchor can match you up with sponsors who want to advertise on your podcast right now. Which means you can get paid doing what you love. Isn't that the fucking dream, my friends? In fact, that's actually what I'm trying to do right now. By reading this ad for you. It is amazing. It helps ease the process for guests. Putting on music. Whatever you want to do. So if you want to start your podcast... Make some money doing it. Go to anchor.fm slash start to join me and several other fabulous people already using Anchor. That's anchor.fm slash start. And I cannot wait to hear you on the air. So what exactly are we dealing with here? There's a lot of information out there about the Sasquatch. Some of you may be wondering, what the hell do I know about this? What is my intel? And that's going to be something I'm going to share with you in a minute. But, before we go into that, I want to address something that those some of you who uh, might have met me before have noticed. Those of you who have known me for a while have noticed. I do not have small feet. So get the jokes out of the way now. If you don't believe me, my mother just found me some Nikes. Size 18 in US. At 17 and 18, Nikes. And, and it's on my social media if you don't believe me. So get the jokes out. Get the jokes out now. Because the thing I'm talking about is usually a lot bigger and probably a lot stronger. So, let's get into it. When it comes to creatures like the Bigfoot or the Sasquatch, I try to pursue any investigations into them as actual biological creatures. Now making this distinction right now due to some of the information that is out there. Could the dog man be related? Maybe. It's often grouped. But right now we're just focusing on the Sasquatch. So what is it? Some of you may have heard that uh, Bigfoot can speak English. Some of you may have heard that there's UFO activity that coincides with Bigfoot sightings. Some of you may have heard they might actually come from another dimension. It's an interesting topic to discuss nonetheless. Personally, I think some of the excuses out there, the more exotic excuses out there, are a little too convenient. A lot of times I've noticed when people start to toss out some of the more exotic explanations such as quantum theory, super strength theory, alternate realities, alternate dimensions, other worlds, things like that, they have really no clue what they're talking about and honestly they're right because those are matters that 
even some of the most brilliant minds in the world today have a hard time talking about. Because there's just so much that goes into it. There's even tales that people have been able to summon the Bigfoot. Summon it like, well, the stories match demons. And of course those throw confusion into the mix. So what's going on, really? For this episode, I'd like to try to avoid some of the more exotic explanations, though I will go into discussions about them. Give me a sec, please. I want to apologize in advance. I am just getting off of a cold. Crap's still at the back of my throat, so... It's making it a little difficult to record shows like these, but... We shall persevere. Anyway. For this episode, I'd like to try to avoid some of the more exotic examples. I'd like to try to avoid speculating whether or not Bigfoot has any extraterrestrial connection... Because none of the cases I've worked, personally, have indicated such results. Maybe I'm missing something? That's a possibility. It's been a while since I've worked a Bigfoot hunt. It's been a while since I've had a successful Bigfoot hunt at that. So I bet some of you are wondering what brought me into it. I seem to be so well versed when it comes to spirits, angels, demons, why Bigfoot? Well, personally I want to investigate it all. I want to try to explore as much of the lore that lies in the world as much as possible. And in almost every culture, every continent on this earth, There's some sort of story about giant humanoid apes wandering the wilderness. We have the abominable snowman, there's the Yaren, Sasquatch, Bigfoot, the skunk ape. Just a few examples off the top of my head. And there's some of the speculation that the alleged dogman slash werewolf stories are anyway related. We got those in there too. So let's work this as a baseline. We're going to use this angle that the Bigfoot is actually a biological creature. So for further reference, the Yaren, Yeti, Model Snowman, names like that, we'll take into consideration as possible other species. Like how there was, at one point there was more than one species of quote unquote man on earth. <coughs> oh, this cough is going to kill me. There's likely more than one species of quote unquote Bigfoot. So where does that leave us? How did I get started in this? Well, for this one, my story actually takes place when I was in the 8th grade. I was on a school field trip. It was a ski trip. <coughs> Ow. Oh, I'm sorry. And at the time of the occurrence, we were just getting back. Our uh, 
my school at the time to go to uh, Magic Valley Ski Resort here in Idaho. And it was on the way back that I noticed something. It should probably come as no surprise that I was a bit of a loner as a kid. Still am a bit today, but not as much as I was back then, but... Often because of how people perceived me because of my size. When I was in the 8th grade, I was already six foot three and hitting 300 pounds. I was never a small guy. Because of people how people perceived me, I didn't really have a lot of friends going up. I didn't get invited to a lot of things. The women I had no trouble with. So says every other male species. Okay, I did okay with the girls considering. But most of the time I was alone. And because I was often left alone, it gave me time to observe my surroundings a bit more. Notice things that others would don't. And it probably is what plays into that habit today. As I was, we were coming down off from the mountains, I was just watching the scenery go by. Then all of a sudden, I noticed this cave. It was pretty big. I could easily get in there, no problem. There was a bit of a climb in order to get in, but once you got there, you could probably settle there if you were in an emergency situation. <coughs> now, it wasn't necessarily the cave itself that caught my attention. It will... It is what was popping its head out. I didn't know what it was at the time. When I saw it, I couldn't believe what I was seeing. I was trying to get as much detail out of it as I could before I made any weird claims. From what I could tell, it stood about eight feet tall at least the cave itself was just a little over nine feet in height so it could easily poke its head in and out it seemed to be kind of slouched over posture was a lot like how you see a lot of bigger guys you know you're probably going to see a bunch of bigger guys you probably kind of slouched over it's a bit of a habit not necessarily a heavy uh, healthy one but it ten it tends to happen I can make out details of its face which kind of looked human kind of looked like a monkey my later research I found a digital reconstruction of a creature from human lineage that looks similar to what I saw. And that was the reconstruction of a Cro-Magnon man. A species of human that predates and coexisted with the Neanderthals. No wait, it wasn't Cro-Magnon, it was uh, Australopithecus, early ancestor to them both. Its body was covered in something dark. Kind of looked like fur, but I was moving too fast to really tell. The creature came up set its hand on the side of the cave 
and just watched the buses as it was going by. All the other kids on the bus were more concerned about what their friends had to say, which was a common issue for my age group. Naturally, I go to look around, see if anybody else noticed this thing. And the only person that caught me what, acting like something was going on was one of my teachers. My teachers asked me, you know, Dakota, is everything okay? It was like, there was something watching. I told her, I looked at her. It was uh, one of my old English teachers. I looked at her and said, uh, there was a cave back there and something was watching the buses. And it was big. Now this was before I became public about my interests, but Anyone who actually sat down to get to know me would notice that whenever I, there was episodes of like Destination Truth, whenever sci-fi would do marathons of that, I would uh, be a little disappointed when they changed the channel a little too fast. Because I was interested in that type of thing. I didn't necessarily keep it a secret. But I also didn't wasn't at the point where I now see it. So it probably influenced their or her answer of saying maybe it was Bigfoot. <coughs> and because I had my own experience, I went to research it. And I was waiting for every chance I could get in order to go for another hunt. And I got one. A few years later. Oh, almost two years later. During a 4th of July camping trip. In that same area. And something happened that. Certainly left a mark. I'm going to continue the story. After the commercial break. It takes a lot to really rattle me, to be honest. But this case rattled me for the right reasons. Being that I was still underage, I had to always be accompanied by a trusting adult, despite the fact that my large size confused most, and still does, Confused most of the population. Am I thinking I'm older than I actually am? I didn't catch that. I wasn't talking to you. Sorry. So, this camping trip provided a unique opportunity. My family and I, we decided to camp out at a site known as Diamond Field Jack. Named after a prospector who was acquitted of murder. Diamondfield Jack is actually not too far from Magic Mountain. It's actually one of the more popular camping spots. So being that I had my encounter in the area, it provided a unique opportunity. Before the trip, I was able to consult with a couple of people. A gentleman by the name of Chris Allen, who is known to, as a Bigfoot hunter, though it doesn't seem to have been active in that regard lately. I was a guest on... I was able to attend a show he did. First show out of New York. And pick up some notes from him. As well as... A video on YouTube which caught my attention showing a gentleman being able to lure out a possible Sasquatch for a thermal capture using nothing more than a chocolate bar 
It took a few days for prep, but the chocolate bar worked. As I was setting up the area, a possible juvenile Sasquatch was trying to sneak up behind me. Of course, once I realized what was happening, I got excited, jumped a little too quick, and uh, scared the little guy off. But it cemented the case for me, more ways than one. <coughs> this is also the reason why I pursue Bigfoot as an actual biological creature until I gained any sort of information to suggest otherwise. As some reports have claimed that Bigfoot sightings have lured out the men in black, UFOs, strange lights, you name it. Now could the Sasquatch be from another planet slash dimension? Maybe. We'd have to capture one. Study it. Or perhaps lure one out. There's a professor here in Idaho at the University of Idaho who's popular amongst Bigfoot circles. He attends all the major events. I was in Oregon last year now and uh, I didn't realize that such an event was taking place otherwise I would have stayed one more day or planned it in advance but nevertheless It provided some interesting prospects because during my investigation I was actually able to collect a foot sample, a foot molding of what I would estimate to be a size U.S. male's 20 foot. Unfortunately, that casting has since been destroyed, but the photos still live on. So what can we name the Sasquatch, if all this is going on? Humanoid, obviously. It's intelligent. Large, very strong. Can use tools. Even though my encounter did not cause any problems or have anything of the such take place. It has been known that the Sasquatch is not afraid to pummel its victims with stones. And there may have been a time, as speculated in many ancient alien circles, that the Bigfoot interacted and lived amongst us humans. But then something happened. Hell, there's even a story that a former U.S. President, Teddy Roosevelt was here in Idaho and shot at the Bigfoot. In fact, quite a few presidents had paranormal encounters of their own. Which would argue makes the situation that much more credible. But it's still up for speculation. So where was I going with this, you may be wondering. Unless any of you happen to have any sort of stories, videos, evidence you'd like to share. And if you do, please, I would love, love to carry on a conversation about these things. 
Let's pursue the Sasquatch and all related creatures as biological. So what can we do? If you want to try to look for yourself one, what's your best option? Obviously, you need to learn possible behaviors, the environment. One of the ideas out there is that Bigfoot related creatures reside in cave systems. And anywhere there is a large grouping of sightings, there's usually a cave slash tunnel system not too far. It may even be ones that the locals aren't even aware of. That's always a possibility. Another thing when it comes to tracking down animals is whether or not they have any predators of their own. We're talking about highly intelligent, eight and ten, maybe even ten foot tall humanoids with the intelligence of man and the strength, the proportional strength to a gorilla. And a chimp can easily, a chimpanzee can easily rip a man apart if it wanted to. Just with brute force. So imagine what these guys can do. It's kind of interesting. So what could kill this thing? Maybe mountain lions. If they got a lucky enough shot. But the alleged loud screeches, like the one I played at the beginning of the episode, would easily scare those off. And if they had to, a Sasquatch can throw down. It can defend itself without a problem. So what's going to be its natural predator? What's the one thing that is a predator to nearly all life on Earth, even itself? What creature has established itself as the dominant force on this planet? Not because of our ability, but on our own intellect. man because that is the case that's why it tends to try to avoid us now behaviors what is this creature's social dynamic how does it interact with others of its kind Apes are social creatures. So we can use the modern great apes as an example, as a template, if you will, to evaluate what we most likely will see. And what we will most likely see is that there will be some sort of tribe. There will be some sort of of family gathering. There will be a hierarchy, even. So that's another thing we have to look for. Chances are, if you see one, Others are nearby. Why do animals have this pack mentality? Because as a group, you're more likely to intimidate potential predators. Now Dakota, you may be going, Dakota, you just said that these things are essentially 10 foot tall gorillas. 
What the hell are they afraid of? Well, us again. So they may not be against wandering off on their own. These creatures will have mental illness just like us. They may even have thought processes not too dissimilar from our own. In fact, they say a lot of modern monkeys and apes have the ability to match human skill had their brain chemistry been a little different. They have all the necessary body parts to take on human-like living conditions. But something about their brain chemistry inhibits that. Another thing we're going to have to look for is diet. What's this thing going to want to eat? How does it get its food, water? In the cave system, there's easily lakes and streams that they can get a drink from now, every now and then. Now, if we're pursuing this as a biological creature, there's two questions that often many skeptics will use in order to counter the claims. Chances are, for many creatures that we have discovered on this earth, We've discovered simply because we came across remains. We basically went, oh, wait, what's that thing? Or where did that come from? And when it comes to Bigfoot, and some even claim the Loch Ness Monster, but the DNA test results seem to indicate that we already knew had that DNA all along. But it just that happened to be a giant eel. In Bigfoot. If these things, there's so many out there. Because clearly if we're spotting juveniles, there's some sort of reproduction going on. How long the sightings have been taking place. So for centuries, centuries. Even thousands of years, potentially. Clearly, there's got to be more than one. And what's the point if they're able to reproduce? What's the chance that the ability to reproduce is nothing more than a measure to help keep life going? If Bigfoot is out there, why don't we find any dead bodies? Some Bigfoot experts claim, and we have seen certain things in the wild that contribute to this, some experts believe the Sasquatch Buries its dead. And there are many animals within wildlife who have been observed to grieve over the deceased. Monkeys will gather around a dead body and mourn. There are several animals out there who know, who seem to know, that that dead body is going to cause problems. People around it for too long can easily get sick, and the smell could attract predators. So if Bigfoot's out there, 
and it has a life cycle, let's say, let's give it a good estimate and say that Bigfoot can live for about 40 years. Where are the, all the old guys at? Is there something with them that helps keep them young? Could they be biologically immortal? To where, under all circumstances, unless they either get sick or injured, they can live forever. And we have creatures that can do that too. But before we start looking towards the more exotic answers, we need to rule out what we know already. Because if Bigfoot fits along the line of human evolution, human ape evolution, maybe it's not an ancestor of ours. Maybe it's a close cousin. Some speculate that Bigfoot may actually be the modern descendant of the Giganthropithecus blackie, which recent studies have shown may have become the modern orangutan. But who's to say the evolution didn't branch off somewhere else? And whatever happened to mankind to make us more intelligent? To advance our learning abilities. Didn't happen to them as well. Similar conditions weren't replicated within them. So they can create their own societies. To create their own social constructs. Because we are not the only creatures on this earth. Who can develop families. Who can develop tools. Something happened to where... We can take things a bit further. And those conditions may be able to be replicated within other animals. If we can figure out what the hell it was in the first place. If we could replicate certain conditions, we may be able to create many animals a lot like humans I mean hell there are certain scientific circles who say that had the dinosaurs somehow managed to survive the catastrophe which led to their mass extinction they may they may have evolved in such a way to where we essentially get what some conspiracy circles within UFO and abduction situations describe as the reptilian alien. So what exactly are we dealing with here? Because I'll be honest, some of the UFO Bigfoot reports sound like people are watching way too much Star Wars. So what's going on here? That can be hard to say. My final thoughts on the matter after this commercial break. The Sasquatch is an ongoing investigation. However, on the odd chance, it is a being from another dimension. What would that call for? And what would it take to prove it? Well, right now... There's not much, except for making contact and establishing how the hell they got here. I said before in previous episodes that the FBI had gone into UFO phenomenon and determined that the visitors are in fact not of this earth, but not necessarily from another planet like we usually think. They are coming from other planes of existence. And often one of the ideas behind other worlds is that there are ult 
alterations between each one. Some only slightly, others much more drastically. So, if Bigfoot is in fact a being from another pla you know, existence, who's he from? Where's he from? Could it be reptilians? Be in fact the uh, dinosauroid descendants of dinosaurs? Or could there be much more at hand? Currently at the time of recording, the second test batch for an experiment to contact another Earth is underway. It is under processing on the technical side before it releases online for my helpful test audience to listen in to see if they notice anything. It's an experiment that piles in of quite a few other things as part of my research. And it's also going to be the topic of next week's episode. The Hunt for Infinite Earth. This next episode is going to be a bit more of a philosophical wandering. Backed by points in which we have established today. What are these other Earths like? Can we visit them? Can we contact them? Can we establish the true nature of the universe by reaching out to our friends? From beyond. Because if you really look at it, some of the explanations for ghosts, angels, demons, UFOs, fairies even, all have some overlap in dealing with other planes, other realities, other dimensions even. So let's talk about it. That's going to be next week's episode. Be sure to tune in. And if you want to see the results, because you somehow managed to miss the hunt for infinite Earths, because yes, that was meant to be affiliated with the CW crossover event Crisis on Infinite Earths due to the fact that the individual I was contacting was none other, or trying to contact for that matter, was none other than John Constantine. Yes, it appears that someone from a comic book may in fact be real. More on that next episode. And if I'm not mistaken, well, well, next episode's going to be on Valentine's Day. I hope you got your gifts ready, lovers out there. And I am hoping that my girlfriend that may be listening to this, I don't know, I'm not going to judge her if she doesn't, enjoys the painting I've been working on for weeks. So... I shall see you all next week. And for those of you single out there, don't worry. Your time will come. My name is Dakota Franson. I am the specialist of the strange. Be sure to like, subscribe, follow me on whatever social media channels you like. And also, if you happen to be familiar with the audio streaming service Spoon, I recently joined that. You can find the link in the comment in the description below. 
I don't necessarily dig into the supernatural on that platform, but it's more of a musical service I use. You get to hear music from yours truly. Yes, I'm a musician. I play a little guitar, a little piano, and I'm thinking of trying out the saxophone. Once I get a few more things underway. So, if you're interested, please do check that out. If you have any comments, suggestions for future show or topics, questions, all I ask is that you be kind and respectful in the conversation and as well to one another. The world's crazy. It seems to only be getting crazier, so we need to do more to help each other out now, don't we? I'll see you next time, my friends. Take care.